Uh, good morning, everyone. Uh, welcome to this week's iteration of the Economic Revitalization Committee for the City of Williamsport. Uh, it is 11.09 on Friday, July 23rd. I'm joined by Councilwoman Mealy, um, Skip Memmi from Community Economic Development, and Shannon Doherty, Joy Walls, and Judy Olinsky from Lake Cumming Arts. Uh, our first and only agenda item is um, a presentation from Lake Cumming Arts. So, Judy, would you like to take it away? Oh, Shannon. Hi, everyone. Hi. Just going to wait for the presentation. I am ready. Thank you. Uh, just the first one. I can't. That's not, that's us. not us. I'm sorry. I mean, I can speak to that, but not really. <laughs> I just make them just say this to those slides. Thank you. So hello and thank you for welcoming us to your meeting today. I am Shannon Doherty and I'm here to talk about the impact of the arts and how Lycoming Arts works in service of that positive impact. The mission of Lycoming Arts is to work to create local and regional connections that generate awareness, opportunities, and support of the arts. The arts inspire us, soothe us, provoke us, involve us, and connect us. They also create jobs and contribute to the economy. The arts mean business. Next slide, please. The arts have an enormous economic impact. Nationally, according to the National Endowment for the Arts and Bureau of Economic Analysis in 2019, the impact of the arts constitutes a nearly $920 billion industry. The arts make up 4.3% of the US gross national product and create 5.2 million jobs. The arts are a larger share of the economy than agriculture, transportation, and tourism. The arts are the emerging sector in economic development. Next slide, please. According to the Arts and Economic Prosperity Five from Americans for the Arts in 2015, the arts add over $1.7 billion to the Pennsylvania economy. They generate $1.3 billion in household income through jobs. Art event audiences in Pennsylvania spend over $1 billion. Arts add $4.2 million to the economy of the Northern Tier. As the cultural center of the Northern Tier, this only adds to Williamsport's economy and economic viability. Next slide, please. As you can see in this timeline, Lycoming Arts has been an established volunteer organization supporting and expanding opportunities for local and regional arts for the last 60 years. Though it has been known by different names, the mission has always been the same, to work to create local and regional connections that generate awareness, opportunities, and support of the arts. In the 70s and 80s, the organization sponsored juried art events, the Severn Rosen Project, and the Susquehanna Valley Festival of the Arts. In the 90s, the organization was charged with distributing grant funding of over $500,000 through the PA Council on the Arts regranting program. In the 2000s, Lycoming Arts, in partnership with Williamsport City Council Main Street Committee, Our Towns 2010, and the Williamsport Business Association, started First Friday and as recognition for the pronounced impact the arts were having on our community, in 2008, Williamsport was selected to host the cultural explosion that was the Governor's Award for Excellence in the Arts. Next slide, please. 
Throughout the 20 years of First Friday, we have put on 240 events and counting with over 8,500 attendees per year, generating over $5.3 million to the community. Lycoming Arts First Friday received over $275,000 in grants and sponsorships from many businesses and organizations who recognize the value of the arts to the community, such as PA Council on the Arts, the Williamsport Lycoming Chamber of Commerce, UPMC, and Woodlands Bank. Does anyone remember what the downtown was like in the 80s and 90s? Please share if you do. Do you remember? I was pretty little, but uh, I remember that the Court Bowl was one of the only things going on back then. <laughs> I remember the Capitol Theater. Yeah. Do you remember the yeah, Capitol the Theater? I saw Bob Dylan at the Capitol. Oh. <laughs> Well, as someone who was a teenager during that time, I can tell you it was a little depressed and um, low energy. And I think we can all agree that prior to the late 90s, early 2000s, our downtown was suffering and had been for a while. First Friday was the event that reignited the fire of community in Williamsport, which led to the vibrant downtown that we have today we are experiencing a renaissance. The public relations rebranding strategy born out of First Friday's success has transformed our downtown. Leaning into the idea of Williamsport as a hip art town on the Susquehanna has brought and will continue to bring tourists to this area and with tourists, their money. Next slide, please. The impact of the arts in First Friday on the downtown can be seen in the, in the design of new buildings and businesses that have come into the downtown, how the readapted buildings have been designed with artistic facades, and how the new public investment in parking so visitors to the downtown have suitable, accessible, and safe parking. These building and design initiatives have attracted businesses like Patina's, Gastonian Gifts, Alabaster Coffee, and a major department store in Kohl's. As well, new restaurants like Barrel 135, The Brickyard and Stonehouse, Moon and Raven, and The Bar. This impact extends into the surrounding area as well. When Guitar Lee's and Converge Gallery grew too large for their downtown spaces, they invested in the community by purchasing buildings outside of the downtown for their businesses. And the downtown impact is also reflected in the increase in public art projects. Next slide, please. The Public Artworks Committee of Lycoming Arts does incredible work to bring art to our public spaces. This group invited Michael Pilato to be a guest speaker for an event, and that is how he became connected to the city and the Chamber of Commerce, who then commissioned him to do the mural outside of the Bullfrog and Woodlands Bank. They work to have a new piece of public art installed every two years, which is tremendous for an all-volunteer organization. They commissioned signs for the three First Friday student galleries, and they designed and printed the cultural trail map of public art. Their activities also generate a good amount of public relations. Next slide, please. Public Artworks has made an investment in art of $75,000. The return on that investment is the beauty public art brings to Lycoming County, which of course is priceless. Here you see a piece of art by Fred Gilmore. That's the top image. And that uh, piece of art is at the Williamsport Regional Airport. On the bottom um, left-hand side, you see the mural by David Stabley that's on the corner of 4th and Market. And on the right-hand side is Shad Run, which is in Pine Square, and it was recently dedicated there. Just to share an anecdote, so prior to moving back to Williamsport, I'm from Williamsport, and um, I moved away for a amount of time to Philadelphia, um, about seven years. And prior to moving back to Williamsport, um, when I did live in Philadelphia, we lived there during the time of Ed Randell and his campaign of actually turning Philadelphia into an arts community. And he pumped a lot of money into community art initiatives. 
Um, mainly, uh, I think of note that people generally see first thing when they go to Philadelphia are the murals that you see around town. So that was the mural arts project by Jane Golden, and she still runs that to this day. But that money infusion and emboldening these nonprofits to create a sense of community through art is what really transformed the neighborhoods of Philadelphia when we lived there. Um, you know, the, the artists would go to the community, the neighborhood, and have a meeting, ask the people of the neighborhood, how do you want to be identified? What is it about this neighborhood's identity that you want to showcase for people? And then the people would decide, and that's what would get painted. And it would really bring the community together. It also now creates for tourists to come in and see all the different murals that represent those aspects of the community. So it really generated um, both community involvement and buy-in, as well as tourism, which then generated more money that can go back into the arts and other initiatives. Um, as well, uh, I teach art history at Penn College, and one of the projects that I make my students do at the end of the semester is um, go and talk about a piece of art that they see every day that maybe they didn't pay attention to prior to my class. Um, and many students will pick a piece of public art, a sculpture or a mural that is in their town, be it Williamsport or another small town in Pennsylvania or New Jersey or wherever they're from, and it really um, makes them pay attention to why their community would have chosen that. And it gives them a sense of pride. By the end of their writing, they say how excited they are that they now get to see this every day and they understand it more. Um, and it really typifies their community or brings their community together. So this is how we know that public arts do bring a community together and do bring money into that community um, through tourism dollars. Next slide, please. And here you can see some examples of public art that was funded by other organizations, um, like the city and the Chamber of Commerce, and inspired by the work of public artworks, because public artwork was shown to be important to the community in telling our story. So here you see uh, Fourth and Market, the Bound to Bloom sculpture that's in Lamar Park, on the Riverwalk, the Woodhick, in Market Square, of course, base is loaded and Trade and Transit Center One with the history of transportation bus reliefs that they have. And of course, this building, Trade and Transit Two, have murals and sculpture. Um, and then the Market Street parking deck, which has the history of Little League and the multicultural history of Lycoming County, which really shows our inclusivity and our diversity as a community, both historically and today. Next slide, please. Like Coming Arts First Friday and Public Artworks are receiving media attention that is attracting visitors to this area. As a volunteer organization, we have utilized the free press coverage and low cost media options at our disposal through the Sun Gazette, local billboards, magazines, radio stations, our own social media presence, and the social media reach of the vendors who participate in First Friday and the downtown businesses. As well, there's a film about First Friday that was made by WVIA um, that will actually be showing sometime this summer. Um, and we'll also be featuring it at our August 6th First Friday event, so you can check that out. Next slide, please. Like Coming Arts is the strongest facilitator of arts and cultural and culture in the county through the variety of programs that we offer, the level of community support and engagement, cultural tourism, the availability of free programs and events which brings art to the community and an art for all initiative. Like Homing Arts through First Friday and Public Artworks has transformed the city. The arts brought back pride in the community, beautification efforts, and commercial vibrancy. Both the 2016 Lycoming County Comprehensive Plan and the Heart of Williamsport Project address the importance of arts to the community. Currently, Lycoming Arts is a purely volunteer-run organization and have been doing an amazing job as such. However, in order to continue the growth and efforts of the organization, we require a paid administrator for the organization so that Lycoming Arts can act as the steward for the objects and efforts to bring the arts to the community. 
the County Comprehensive Plan and Heart of Williamsport stipulated the need for such a position. Next slide, please. Moving forward as volunteers, we know that 80% of travelers are cultural. So building the arts and culture in, our, culture in our community will draw in tourists who come for Little League or outdoor pursuits. We are a Susquehanna Greenway partnership, river town and trail town, and a member of the PA Wilds. And we can look at Pine Creek and that area to see how they benefit from ecotourism in their area, as well as cultural offerings. Our Art Town brand is supported by all our programming and marketing. First Friday, uh, we've held 240 events and a new event every first Friday. Public artworks with 10 public art projects and a new public art project every two to three years. The Lycoming Arts Art in the Neighborhood program with its art to go and 720 student art shows to date both specifically designed to bring art into the community in keeping with social justice initiatives of the city. Lycoming Arts Art Everywhere program supports entrepreneurship in the arts by providing exhibition space and reception space for artists to showcase their work and host potential patrons. Lycoming Arts volunteers have created a place that attracts young professionals and young families, stopping the brain drain in our community. Volunteers have built these programs, but volunteers are in short supply, as we know, and uh, you know, just from trying to find volunteers for local volunteer fire departments and things like that. People are working longer hours, both parents are working and a family, and they wanna spend their limited free time with families and kids and doing other things. So Lycoming Arts is also up against that volunteer shortage. Lycoming Arts needs a professional staff member to keep momentum going for the arts in Lycoming County. Next slide, please. Moving forward with professional staff, current programs would continue and our Art Town brand would allow us to develop additional offerings like Arts Weekends, where cultural tourism is supported by curated itineraries of themes and events. A cultural district, which is a zone that harnesses the power of cultural resources to stimulate community and economic development. Cultural districts, become focal points for generating small businesses, attracting tourism, nurturing cultural development, and fostering civic pride. Cultural trails are curated interactive experiences that are used to tell the story of the area and allow residents and tourists to celebrate history, culture, and the natural environment in multiple ways. Cultural districts and cultural trails have strong and proven economic impact. The article Rural Prosperity that you were given by Judy earlier, uh, Rural Prosperity in the Arts, outlines several working examples of the concepts of cultural districts and cultural trails, both of which were covered in the County Comprehensive Plan. These two ideas have made millions of tourist dollars for the areas that develop them. In Pittsburgh, their cultural district has a $303 million impact, excuse me. The Route 6 Cultural Trail, right here in our backyard, makes $90 million. In Maryland, the cultural district concept pulls in over $80 million for the state, but specifically in Hagerstown, which is a uh, similarly sized community, they pull in about $25 million in annual impact. And in Virginia, one of their cultural trails has a $9.2 million impact on that area. These initiatives would be a boon for our area. 15 states have cultural districts and Pennsylvania is considering making cultural districts opportunity zones. Lycoming Arts currently has a cultural district and four cultural trails in research and development. Next slide, please. So what are reasons to support the arts? Well, they drive tourism and revenue to local businesses. The arts drive creative industries and economic development. They generate civic engagement and a sense of community. And they support well-being, learning, healing, while bringing beauty and joy to our lives. Next slide, please. Lycoming Arts has endured, adapted, and succeeded. As documented by the Lycoming County Comprehensive Plan, Lycoming Arts is a current and future economic development asset. As documented by the Heart of Williamsport Action Plan, Lycoming Arts is one of our top com 
community development values and assets. Our community values like homing arts. Through the county plan and the heart of Williamsport, the community has asked for your investment in like homing arts. Do you agree that the arts are an economic and community development asset? Yes. <laughs> Great. So both plans call for a professional staff to protect and expand this asset that we all agree is valuable. Supporting an executive director and staff for like coming arts has a huge cost to benefit ratio. According to the National Governors Association, an investment of $100,000 over two years would position the community to make millions in return. Can you consider funds from the American Rescue Plan to support like coming arts and invest in this opportunity? Question. And that's it. That's that's my last question. I know we're going to have uh, some discussions on on that coming up. On the yeah, 29th. Next, next week actually. So yeah. this, this is aptly timed. Um, but uh, it, and that's not a question that we can answer anyway. <laughs> oh, no, we didn't assume you would answer us. But, um, well, do you have any questions about what we've said so far? Um, I mean, it's so funny, people always say to me, they, well, actually, when we did the comprehensive plan, uh, you could see in the supervisors, you know, in their eyes, that they had seen that something had happened in the downtown. But I don't know that anybody has ever specifically told the story. And to the best of our knowledge, this is the story of what happened. Um, and, you know, yeah, we would like feedback. Uh, and also, moving forward, like, one of the reasons we're here and went to the county and are going to, to the other places we're going to, this is an unbelievable opportunity for Lycoming County. Um, because of Lycoming Arts, and, and because of Lycoming County, I mean, what Lycoming Arts did was give a platform to a lot of the assets were here, but then that enabled the assets to multiply and have a sense of identity about themselves. But those assets have put us in a position where um, what they're talking about uh, in rural prosperity through the arts, we are really positioned to do those things. And they are big money makers in addition to making the communities better. In this booklet, we've tried to outline as best we can the steps to um, what we've developed so far in terms of developing a, um, a cultural district. I mean, actually, we started this process on the Main Street Committee 25 years ago. Because Main Street said, catalog your assets. Uh, this is for Mr. Yoder. And here's one for Skip and one for Chelsea. Um, now, obviously, as volunteers, um, like when you look at what they're talking about in um, rural prosperity through the arts, th that's another level. Um, and we would have to work together, the city, the county, the chamber, the foundation, in order to make that next level happen. But again, as she said at the end, the cost-benefit ratio on this is amazing. Um, I, at one of the Heart of Williamsport uh, meetings uh, that we had over in the park home, uh, we were talking about all these different things, and Bob Ilion said, uh, he said, uh, what did he say? He said, assets. Assets, like Coming County has assets up the wazoo. What we need is management, you know, to make the assets, the presentation of the assets. And, um, you know, doing what we do, we came across the concept, started to develop the concept of the cultural trail, I mean the cultural district and the cultural trails. And then the, mag uh, the article comes along and says, you know, this is, other people are doing this is it, and this is incredibly successful. So we have half the roadmap, they have the other half. This is a great opportunity. And it also, particularly on the, the cultural district, it's, uh, is it called scalable? This is an opportunity that we can invest in over time. Mm -hmm. uh, Do you have anything? I see your gears turning, Liz. Yeah, yeah, no, they need to turn for a little while longer. I'm just looking. <laughs> I'm just absorbing. <laughs> well, we had worked on uh, an arts and entertainment zones. Remember when Gabe was going to do one? And um, at that point in time, we were talking more about uh, how, how specific it would be to the downtown, which it still had a lot of benefits there. Um, this is the concept expanded. And as uh, Shannon said, there are 13 states that have been doing this. 
And um, Maryland is, I forget how long they've been doing it, but they've been very, very successful. And if you look at the map in the beginning, I mean, when we were on Main Street 25 years ago, one of the things that wowed us was that Main Street said catalog your assets. So we, um, luckily, the planning department had a, is it a, they had mapping programs. So they mapped the assets for us. But once you map the assets, if you look at the map on the front page, we have a glorious cultural district, a college, a, a hip downtown, a historic district, and another college. And then even off of that, if we get to the point where we could do trolleys, that would give us neighborhood penetration mm -hmm. uh, in terms of doing what Shannon had talked about, like get, inviting the neighborhoods to participate in what we're doing and you know, telling the story. Like one of our uh, possibilities is a cultural trail. There is a wonderful cultural trail about the Underground Railroad that comes from Union County through there, through here. But we've done, we did the research one summer about making an Underground Railroad tour just for you, uh, like Homan County, based on some of the work that uh, was it Maggie, Mamie, Mamie Diggs did, and um, Lynn Estiman. Mm -hmm. So there's there's a lot of opportunities for us. We have the assets. We yes. just need the management. Right. Well. Sort of figuring out how to market them adequately, <laughs> but I'd add. Uh, talk to me about the KOZ concept for um, cultural districts and what that looks like. There's a letter in there. Uh, Joy Walls and I attended a workshop on um, creative placemaking. Now, creative placemaking is this hip new word in, in uh, development. And I said, oh, we've been doing this for 25 years. <laughs> but it really is about enhancing community through the arts. Right. And then when you enhance, enhance community through the arts, what happens is economic development. Right. Um, so uh, at that workshop, they passed out a letter. Uh, I think it's here. That, uh, let me see. There it is. We gave you a copy of that. Our state is considering this. Now, part of our campaign as our arts council would be to start saying to our state, lobbying them, that we want this to happen. I mean, we brought it home, and Mark Morosky's on our board. He immediately called them up, <laughs> and he said, I want to support this, and if you're going to do this, I want to help to do this. So we could be part of creating that. Um, I have, if you are interested, I, you guys have so many things to read, so we tried to make this as simple as possible, but I do have other articles. We have uh, the impact study for the cultural districts in Maryland. We have um, a cultural district. The reason we started to focus on that was that if you ask, like the Americans for the Arts and the National Endowment of the Arts, what is the best way to market an art town? They'll say a cultural district. They have a cultural district exchange where you can go on and do workshops, get you know technical help, all sort of things. But um, and Corning has a cultural district, the uh, Gaffer Zone. Right. And ours was actually originally called the Old City Cultural District when we were on Main Street, but then they took that name for over there. And, um, and all of this is negotiable at this point because this is only us planning. But right. part of the process is to go to you know, the community right. and say, look at what we have, this is what we could do. And as Shannon, when you talked about going into the neighborhoods and asking everybody, who are we? I mean, Heart of Williamsport did a lot of that. But you saw what they said. Um, no, yeah, I think everybody agrees that I, Williamsport has struggled for a long time. We've had, um, between Elm Street and Main Street, we've had a, a handful of directors over the last couple of decades. Um, and, that, and, and I think part of the planning for any sort of um, community funded staffing for a, a nonprofit organization has to involve how to make it self-supporting within five years before that money's invested. Mm -hmm. uh, um, because there simply is no way right. there's, there's no way that that money comes from a um, comes from the city or the county in the long term right. um, for a nonprofit director. Um, and and the what what seems to have happened in the past is that we are um, we receive like state grants that fund a, a position for five years and at the end of five years um, no matter how competent those individuals are managing day-to-day -day activities, there's no ability to fund, <clears throat> excuse me, to fund that position out of organizational funds at the end of that five years. Um, so I think, um, and it is asking a lot of uh, a um, volunteer organization, and, it, and it, I think it's something that the 
um, that the, the city could potentially help with, that we could all put our heads together on. Um, part of the argument to me needs to be um, these are the very specific things that we will be funding that will generate income to the organization, that will leave the organization in a position to fund itself within the next yes. yeah, three years, say. Um, in a position to fund this position. I mean, anyone you hire in that position has to be aware, obviously, that fundraising isn't going to check their goal. Um, but, uh, you know, I've watched Preservation Williamsport do it, I watched Main Street do it, I watched Elm Street do it, and, and none of those organizations currently have a paid staffer because the, the ability to fund, to, to fund that staffer um, from the organization's own earnings um, never materialized. I think it's possible. It happens other places. We just got to figure out what they're doing other places. <laughs> no, we um, think because otherwise, you know, I, I mean, a, a, a paid staffer for two years it doesn't. It gives it gives a person time to develop a couple of plans, but not to implement them. And then, if you right. don't have the ability to continue paying that staffer after a two-year, three-year mark, um, then you're in the same position you were trying to continue with volunteer efforts. So I think that, to me, is what we need to figure out before we can. Um, uh, n not that, I mean, like, like Dave said, the city is looking at what we're doing with ARPA funds beginning next week. Um, we have a timeline out to 2024 to um, allocate them, and I want to say through 2026 to spend them, correct? Yes. Yeah. Um, so, so we've got a, a five-year timeline through which we can fund projects and a three-year timeline um, during which we can figure out which, product, which projects we want to fund. Um, if that is, turns out to be one of the uses that this, to which the city will put the money, I, I can only imagine that it will be. Um, I think uh, certainly a, a substantial amount of the money we will try to utilize to fund city-related projects and, and needs within the, with, within the city's infrastructure, but, um, but some of it will certainly be granted out to other organizations. Well, I'm sure a portion of that conversation has to be what, how much are we shoring up with that money and how much are we expanding out with that right. money? So that's well, I, I mean, and, and, and a part of the conversation has to become that our current economic model within the city is not sustainable in the long term, so we have to figure out a way to expand with that model. Um, and, whether, and if that expansion happens through an expansion of the arts, excellent. But my point is, um, what we don't want to do, I don't think, is, um, is, is kind of hope that we see an expansion so much as make sure that we see an expansion by knowing that the money is going towards something that will eventually become right. self-sustaining. You want to create value. Right, and, and we want to as much, I mean, understanding that everything is always a little bit of a gamble, but we want to try to ensure the success of the funds that we're placing. Um, uh, through um, sort of long-term planning and or understanding the, the, the goal steps. So I think what I would actually say would be a, a service to this project or to the concept moving forward is um, I'd like to understand where other communities have done this. Uh, it, Corning to me is not a good guy because the Corning Museum and the Corning they fund them. Foundation they fund them. funded everything. Yes. Um, uh, Corning is, is an awesome place, don't get me wrong, right, but, right. but they have kind of a bottomless pot of money out there right. which they're sure. working to, to fund their arts efforts. But um, we looked at other cities. We right. looked in, uh, at Scranton. Exa yeah, exactly. They no, they I mean, they're, 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 they're a great example. So yeah. yes. how did those organizations um, take uh, a small chunk of money to, to hire a director and then that director turned things around and figured out a way to fund the decision in perpetuity? Um, well, if you look at the benefits of, of a cultural district, just, just that one thing alone, there's a lot of people in our uh, city that, that this would benefit. It would benefit the parking authority because the parking authority, uh, uh, two, three years ago, um, a clearman I know came to the council or to someone and had a development project that he wanted to do in the East End, but I believe he wanted $3 million worth of parking. Right, right. Okay, and the city went, well, what are we going to do? But if Actually, we what had. What he wanted was for us to apply for a redevelopment capital assistance program grant for $3 million worth of parking. But um, the city said we don't need parking in an area where we. <laughs> right. Right. Um, right. But having the possibility of uh, having parking en enables more development. I know, um, what's his name, Herd Lowe would like to develop the uh, bingo building. Is it the, was it the Keystone Bingo Building? Oh, oh, that, oh, I love the, that building. Cool, That's so yeah, beautiful. Yeah, yeah. That's a beautiful old building. But if we had a cultural district, uh, now the thing we could possibly do over time is to develop a trolley system. A trolley costs a little bit more money. I'm not sure exactly what they cost. But in Philadelphia, they have a system, is it called Flash? Where they wrap the buses in art, right. and so if uh, now 
because we're a small city, to sustain a trolley system that sustains a, a cultural district, like the example in there of, of um, Seattle, is not totally feasible. Right. But the both colleges, I believe, pay into RVT to have like a uh, pass for their students to go from yeah, college to college. Uh, RVT has multiple community partners. Okay. Um, but RVT is still funded by, uh, only 5% funded by its own actual earnings. Um, Ninety-five percent of it is state right, <laughs> but um, having that uh, in the winter time, our trolley system be, could be used by the college students, mm -hmm. could be used by the elderly to get around this. It could yeah. be a basically. I knew. I think we actually have a circulator at this point in time, which I never can quite figure out where it goes and what it does. But I right. see it down at Wegmans. And then you you have all those tourist buses of people who come come to Wegmans, who at this point in time come to Wegmans Wegmans because they're on foot and there's no way to experience the city. Right. So that would that's another opportunity. You also could take the trolley system and create a park and ride where mm -hmm. you could have off-site parking lots, which are a lot cheaper than using our CBD, and then have people who work in the downtown use those parking lots for $15 as a, mo a month as opposed to $30 in the deck. Mm -hmm. I just came on into the deck. The first three floors of the deck are given to people, to businesses in the downtown. So there, there are a lot of po potential partners in this. Mm -hmm. um, uh, I would suggest that RBT is a very strong partner for the trolley program. In fact, if I were you, I, I would say the wise, the wise idea. Chris has a hard out, so. Okay, and I have a yeah, you do. Okay. So, so I'll I'll stick <laughs> we'll I'll stick around, back. but but let me let me officially end the meeting. Yeah, so, okay, so yeah. Sure. Then we can keep yeah. talking. So, um, okay, so that let's 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 wrap up right. item one, uh, uh -huh. item two. Any related items, Liz? Do you have any related? <laughs> no items? related items. Okay. And let's just say for the record um, that, I, that I think all of us find this to be a very promising concept. Yes, we absolutely. Have, yeah. Um, <laughs> we need to sort out some further elements of the of the, of the planning of the whole thing. Um, yes, okay, right. absolutely. Thank you. Um, but, uh, but so that was one related day. item. That was no related, <laughs> no related items aside from that. Um, so I'll entertain a motion to adjourn. So moved. Uh, second. All in favor? Oh. Uh, all in favor. <laughs> aye. Is that an aye from you as well? Chair, too many committees. Aye. Yeah. <laughs> right. Well, and, and is the meeting.